Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make John Summit and repopulate more style minimal tech house, sort of like the more modern current sound that's very popular. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, mini, presets, everything like that from this video. It's available right in the top of the description for just $5. If you guys enjoy these videos, definitely go pick that up. It really helps support me. Plus, you get a really awesome template to follow along and make your own tracks out of. And yeah, so, let's dive in. Alright, so, first thing we've got up here is the bass and the kick. So here's the bass line. So we're in the key of F sharp minor, so you can see I'm just using some very basic voices, right? We've got the root note, the minor third, and then the minor seventh here, which minor seventh is a very fancy way of saying two notes down from the root note, right? Like, actually very simple voice there. But yeah, that's something I want to start with, is like, you're really going to want to limit the amount of notes that you use for this bass line, right? Like, you're not going to want to go and write a bass line like this. Like, I could do that, and that all fits in the same key. But as you can hear, it's a lot more impactful if you just hone in on, like, two or three notes like this. And it's because, of course, this is musical. We want there to be notes. But really, you have to think of it more in terms of the groove. Like, and basically, this bass line is kind of like a percussion. And it's almost like every time you play a new note, that's like a different percussion hit, right? And like when you're making your percussion here, you wouldn't really just go and get like, say, 12 different ones, like, because there's 12 different notes in the scale, right? Because you would want to really keep it to like two or three. And so that's how we're thinking about the bass line here. And then the other thing that I think is really important is when you write a bass line like this, you really want to start with just one note. Like what I'm doing to write this is I'm doing like, like, okay, that sounds cool, right? Like, Right, just getting that groove down, and then you can go and you can actually pick out the notes for it. But it's all about that groove. And going back to what I was saying before about each new bass note essentially being like a different percussion sound, you know, that's why you change, like, say on this, why you go to A, rather than having that stay on F sharp there. It's because now, like, if we make that F sharp, it's a whole different groove. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think, you know, obviously it's very simple. You hear these bass lines and you think it's almost like stupidly simple. But there's actually a lot more to it. And there's actually a lot more kind of nuance in there. And I think that's essentially where a lot of it comes out. Now from the sound on this one, this is a pretty simple FM sound. The way we're making this, it's actually no FM, but we're using operator, so whatever you want to say. So basically, yeah. We're using this FM algorithm here where it's just every oscillator side by side. Nothing is being modulated. And then we're using a square wave and a saw wave. And the reason we do this is, as you can hear, it's really almost like a sine wave bass, right? Like it's very deep and soft like that. But essentially, as you may know, when you have like a saw wave and a square wave, it's very harmonically rich. There's a lot going on there in the actual harmonic spectrum. So, we just take that and low pass it. And then this way, you can solo just those lows, which are really fat because there's so much harmonic content. But we're not going to have all that mid-range and highs. And then I just put a little envelope on it, which helps with the groove, actually, because it makes it a bit more punchy. And yeah, and then that's just going through a bit of compression, just side-chaining into the kick. Very simple. But yeah, and then we have the kick. And as you would probably expect, kick is dry. It's just a nice fat kick. This is one that I've layered from a few kicks. I just really liked. The kick is tuned to the bass line as well. I think that's going to be really important. Like if I put the kick up a few octaves. You can hear that. And then, see that's off. And now it's perfectly in time, or in tune. So that's really important as well. And yeah, and then on the group of those, the only thing that's happening there is it's just this high pass filter, just for the break. And then right here, 
You can see it just goes back down, just like a simple little build up thing there. And then we get that one psh, right when the crash hits, you get a kick there, so it's really impactful. And that's also almost like kind of bringing in a little bit of 90s house influence, too, I think. And then it turns off. So it's pretty simple, but it just kind of like allows you to make that build a little bit more effectively. And then down here we have the hi-hats, which is starting with this main hi-hat. So this is just two layers. So they're actually both like 909 style hi-hats. And this one, I think the last step that we would probably want to do is just put a little high-pass filter on it. But you can hear this one gives us the body like the And then this one gives us those bright highs. And then you put them together, and there you go. And you'll notice, even though we're layering these, obviously, neither one of these really fill up exactly what we want in the frequency spectrum. We need both of them. But you'll notice that each individual layer isn't a crappy sound on its own either. Like, we're still just choosing really high-quality samples and layering those together. It's not just because you have some, like, crappy samples that you can then go and make them magical. It's like, it has to be... Magical samples create a magical result. Bad samples create a bad result. And then we have the clap. Pretty simple, but one thing I've noticed recently is that the clap is actually not going to be as loud as you would think, right? Like, if I turn this up too loud, you can notice. It can really throw the groove off. So you actually want to maybe get it to like what you would think is loud enough and then turn it down a little bit from there. That's what I do. Then we have like these background hi-hats. Which you'll notice this pretty much has something going at all times. But it's split between two different hi-hats. And then you put those together. And you can hear that just creates a lot of movement around the main hi-hat. And then on top of that we also have this little groove happening. Which, this is just two loops that I took, and I'll play that with the main hi-hat so you can hear. So it's just a bit of call and response, right? Because you get that... And all this uh, is, is it's just a shaker loop, and then this little, like, rave. Like, one of those ones you guys have probably been seeing me do in the hard techno videos. Like, that same type of loop, but we're just taking those and creating a bit of call and response with those. And this is a real example of like how you can take loops and make them your own too. Because obviously like this isn't what you get when you just drag in the shaker loop and just make it as long as you want, right? Like this actually kind of takes some effort and some thinking and like not just like, again, just dropping it in. But using a loop because there's a lot of texture and a lot of movement there that you won't get with rigid program percussion. But still, like I said, like chopping it and making it your own. Then we have the background percussion, which is all this stuff. Oh, and this thing down here, too. So as you can hear, this has a lot of groove going on. If I play it with the main hi-hat and the clap, you can really hear. Right, this stuff adds a lot of groove to the track. Now, if you listen to the whole thing, you probably can hear that little bloop that... But these aren't the things that you're going to hear right away, right? Well, then if I turn them off... You see, there's, so, there's like a lot missing there. So, even though these are the background elements that you might not think are as important, you can see they don't even play in the build. They're really important because with this style, there's not that much going on musically in the drop. Like, it's really the bass line, and that's mostly it, you know, in terms of, like, musical stuff. So you really need to fill it up with percussion. So this stuff kind of serves the space where maybe, like, you might have, like, one or two other synth lines, right? And you'll notice all this stuff is pretty much just dry. It is just dry, you know, it's just the programming. And really creating that groove that's going to, like, talk to itself, where 
Like, you start with this stuff up here. Like, you can pretty much see it down the line. Like, you start with your kick and your bass line. Then you get the hi-hats. The main one, at least. The clap and some backgrounds. Some more backgrounds. And then you can just go and add these, like, as you see fit. You know, like, we start with the swim shot. And then we do, like, that, right? So now it's... And then you can go and add like this. And like, it's just kind of like, yeah, all building on itself, essentially. And then this last one down here, even just that one that comes once every two bars. And then it's like, that stuff that's happening every two bars contrasted with the stuff that's constantly happening. Contrasted with the stuff that's like, you know, just a little bit in every bar. And then all that is going to come together and create your groove. And so those are all sort of like the main elements, right? Like that's really the stuff you want to start with. And then all the stuff down here is just kind of like the sauce. Like we have this piano and the vocal and then pretty much just our build-up effects. So the first thing down here is going to be this house piano. <laughs> Now you notice the house piano itself, the actual sound, it's pretty dry. The only effect on here is just this washout. And there's a high pass filter as well. But yeah, so this is one of those sounds, you know, it's just the Korg M1 piano, classic house piano sound. You pretty much just load it up and that's the sound. You're really not going to need to do too much of that. But for the actual notes on this one, so basically what's happening here is these are chords like pretty basic chords but it's made up of different melodies that are happening and what i mean by this is you can see we start down here it's right and then up here we have or just and then you also have Like you can see this at Not that. And then even up here. And then like this top melody on its own might seem kind of boring. Like if I was just playing that. It's really simple, but then you're stacking these different melodies and kind of building chords. And that's essentially how it works. And it helps to have a strong progression in the bass, right? Like this is... Like those three notes together are very powerful. So that's going to do a lot of it. And then, yeah, like I said, for the effects, very simple. It's just going to be this washout. And all this is, is this is a rack that I made based on this other washout rack I used to have. Where it's just a high pass filter and a reverb. Wrap that knob so that you get this, like, kind of disappearing thing. And there's also a compressor bringing out the reverb. But yeah, and then that's just kind of like that. Standard house piano. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that if we go from like the house piano over to the bass line, it might sound a bit wonky, right? Like it's two really different ideas. It's like that, but then that. So, like, how are these gonna work? But you'll notice that if I take the bass line and put it up a few octaves so it's just in the same like key where you can actually hear the notes. You can see they actually are written to work very well together. And that's what you need to make sure. Just because you have this bass line and that part works, and then you have the melodic stuff in the break and that part works, it doesn't mean they work together. And for your track to really be as good as possible, you need to make sure that those two are going to fit together. So that's something to keep in mind there. Just writing the bass line while you're hearing this piano, rather than just kind of like having them as two random different things, essentially. 
And yeah, then we have our vocal sample, which you'll notice that also fits very well with the chords. Oh, So it's just these two little vocals that alternate here. Got a little bit of echo on that. Oh yeah, then underneath that, it's pretty much just like we have like this snare fill. That one, and then this little like. Just 909 snare playing straight 16th notes with the volume building up on this utility. I'll show you the automation there. And then other than that, it's just crashes and sweeps, right? We have like this. Like that crash and then the building up sweep. And then this one when it hits. Which is just going through a bit of auto pan so that it bounces off the kick and kind of has a bit more rhythm. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as let me know what you think of this video in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description and on my Patreon if you're a patron. Thank you so much to everybody who goes and grabs this. It's just $5 at the top of the description. But it really helps support me and keep me going so I can keep bringing you guys new videos. Plus, you get an awesome project file that you can then go and turn into your own track. Or you can follow along or even just learn from it. But it's all there in a very professional and full sounding template that already will help you get closer to the sound you're trying to get. So the link to that is at the top of the description. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.